No, this doesn't seem right at all. That's better. Look at the world. Only someone who is pathologically optimistic could read a newspaper and conclude that there's a point to any of this. For any of the examples of altruism you want to lay at my feet, I can give you a thousand counterexamples of truly despicable acts committed by people who thought, and here's the kicker, that they were right. As Bill Hicks once said, We're a virus with shoes, okay? <laughs> so, what can you do? Of course, you could try and change something. I mean, look at all of those brave souls on Twitter changing the world in between wanks and pints of high fructose corn syrup. They are the true knights errant of the digital age, slaying all dragons before them in 280 characters. What a load of old shit. Face it, you can't change anything, and certainly not going through that portal into the worst excesses of the id. No. When confronted with the world, your only choice is to conclude that there is nothing and it's all pointless. You can still play some games though. No one said you can't have fun when contemplating the endless abyss. So here are my five games for all right thinking people. That's right, nihilists. As there is nothing, there can't be zombies. But thankfully, that's not the reason this game is on the list. It's because City of Horror strips the human psyche of all of its illusions of civility and leaves it shivering in its naked brutality on the table. The zombie apocalypse has been averted, society has returned to normal, one city remains infested, and unfortunately, you're in it. You're in luck, though. A chopper is coming to pick you up. All you have to do is survive until 4am and get a shot of anti-zombie vaccine to get in it. Problem is though, there's not enough vaccine to go around and the zombies want to go out with a bang. Like all great works about the risen dead, City of Horror understands that it is the humans and the extremes to which they'll be pushed that is the interesting thing. You will have to wheedle, deceive, and sometimes resort to out-and-out -out violence, because when society is disintegrated, you will do anything to survive, or life will be nasty, brutish, and short. The City of Horror reminds us that we are all two meals away from becoming wolves, and also you get to beat up your mates. Win. Even the way this game is sold highlights you can never avoid the unending indifference of the universe and you will eventually be embraced in its cold and infinite arms. Arkham Horror The Living Card Game is the best game that Fantasy Flight has ever done. A brilliantly gripping and innovative recapitulation of the Lovecraftian canon into game form. Lovecraft lost God, and with that loss any reason to assume there was any purpose in anything. There is no good or evil, simply the black expanse of godless eternity and any knowledge of it will drive you mad. The card game version evokes this perfectly in its sheer difficulty. You embark on a mission in Arkham Horror, assuming that there will be salvation at the end. I mean, this is what you've been taught by the fanord hiding minions standing in front of the blackboards of your youth. But the sheer amount of monstrous evil it throws at you right from the start disabuses you of that folly very quickly. Even if you survive, you're damaged and changed irretrievably, never again able to smell the roses because you detect the rot beneath their perfume. Then the next month a new set of cards crashes onto your doormat and more of your humanity is sloughed off, eventually leaving you a giggling shamble, staring into the black heart of the universe and realising that you are just an incidental character in Azathoth's dreams and you find yourself screaming at it to WAKE UP! hugely naive to think that when the aliens discover us that they will come in peace. Resources are finite and they will want to do two things. Gobble up the resources and then stop us from gobbling them up. They're going to do that by firing destructo beams out of their carapaces. This is XCOM the board game. A useless fight against a horde of technologically advanced monsters that want to wipe us out and take what we've got. It's also a brilliantly designed game that is relentless in its theming. 
Each player takes on a role in the futile defence of Earth against the alien menace. You can be the commander, allocating the budget and deploying fighters, or, or the chief scientist, researching ways to make marmalade out of the invaders. The central officer disseminates vital information, and the squad leader goes bang bang. This is a wonderfully tense game and never lets you forget that the alien invasion will be a bloody nightmare. We are cursed with the desire to survive, even in the face of assured destruction, and XCOM models this wonderfully. Don't expect to win, though. You won't. A true nihilist understands that relationships are pointless because they will inevitably end so they learn to live alone. This is why the Nihilist Gamer needs some solo games in their collection, and what's better for someone who understands the pointlessness of life than a game where death stalks you at every turn. Final Girl emulates 80s slasher movies in the eponymous trope. You are the final girl, set against the lone killer seeking to kill you before you kill him. This is a pitiless game of resource management and card deployment where you have to fight off the madman and save yourself. Final Girl gives you a real challenge. The design is clean and easy to pass, which is so crucial in solo games, and it keeps you engaged throughout. This is one of the best solo games out there, but can you win, though? Well, as a card-carrying nihilist, I don't concern myself with something as facile and ephemeral as victory. There are loads of expansion boxes, so if I manage to best one of the villains, I can be sure to be crushed by one in another box, as nothingness intended. Not that it intended anything, because, you know, there's nothing. Bloody hell nihilism is hard. Life is a trudge through the sodden earth, and no amount of trinkets and baubles from Amazon will rob you of reality. There is one game that lets you know that life is toil, and that is Uwe Rosenberg's Agricola. Every turn is struggle as you strive to put food on the table to feed your ever-burgeoning family. You know you shouldn't create more mouths to feed, but who will bring in the harvest and peel the carrots? So you are compelled to create more hands to help tend to the farm, and they need to be fed, so the cycle continues until death. Agricola is the perfect design for letting you know that everything is futile. What are we working for? Turnips! And if you don't grow enough turnips, you'll have to go begging and that'll make you lose. But surely there has to be more to life than turnips? No, there bloody isn't, so get out there and pick those bloody turnips, you lazy salt. Agricola. Well, that was downlifting. I assume none of you can be bothered to do any of the following, but I'll go through it anyway. Not that there's any point. You can like the video if you liked the video, and if you really liked it, you can sub to the channel. Not that it means anything. You can buy brilliant merch at sirmeeple.com, then throw it all in a landfill. And if you want to help these videos get made, you can go to patreon.com forward slash 5G4D and pledge to help. Or not. Or do. Who cares? I do, or do I? Bloody hell, I'm giving up nihilism. It's far too complicated.